Hey folks. Gonna do some cat games and go over cat strategies. So in the base game, cats are definitely the weaker of the factions. Um, I'd probably put them at the bottom behind Vagabond, Woodland, and Eerie in that order. That doesn't mean they can't win, but it does mean they have a harder time winning and mainly because their fate is out of their hands and not just in the way of other factions hurting them, but their ability to win can depend a lot on what other factions do to one another more so than just if they get uh, hampered. So starting off my clearing, I like to play random clearings. Um, usually gonna pick based on my hand here. And up here we have a strong set for the favor card. So I'm gonna go here. Always build your first sawmill at your keep. Sawmills are your most important buildings. Generally you wanna build one of those every round. Get to the five as fast as possible. Um, because wood is your resource to get points. And that is usually your bottleneck along with spaces to build. Um, workshop. You're going to build wherever suits your crafting. So mice here. Recruiter, you want to build generally where you can threaten um, a favor card the best. That way you can hold that space the best or uh, use it to threaten dominance. So also going to go double up in this space. So generally, uh, You have three free actions every turn, but really you have two because one of those actions should always be building. If you don't have space to build, you're gonna have to make some with movement and attacking or let other players uh, cause that by fighting each other and you move in or attacking you. For crafting, you're generally only gonna be worried about the one suit or one clearing crafting and you're going to craft those whenever possible get your points the cats do have a steady stream of points if they have room to build and they would that's why we're going to prioritize sawmills um, behind that we're going to go recruiters and the last and rarely built is going to be workshops you're not going to do a lot of crafting um, even though they do scale in points better. The recruiters are gonna get you more cards and more board presence, which you'll you'll need in late game. The workshops are a great secondary building though, because those early ones do scale up quicker at second point. So I'm gonna go ahead and build a sawmill. This area up here is pretty safe. Vagabond and all that. Got a UI problem here. So opening turn, always build a sawmill and then recruit. You're not going to really need to march. On uh, round two or three, depending on how the board's looking, you want to consolidate your forces back away from the Eerie or away from a strong support token. But I'll talk about those in a second as well. Um, overwork is not bad here. Um, we're not going to be building this. So overworking to get an extra wood early is not bad. You do need to be careful about banking a lot of wood because that's a lot of points you can give someone that moves in or if a mouse uh, revolts on you. So I'm playing against AI. I do have it on hard, but we should be able to sail to a victory unless they somehow gang up on us. But that's so we can go over these strategies and general rule of thumb with cats. Um, so I talked a little bit about building placement. Sawmill always in your keep for your first one and then somewhere safe for your second. Recruiters, you would usually want to keep in the same clearing type as your keep if possible. And this map was good to us. It put three mice together here. 
that's so that later you can threaten a dominance card because you'll generally keep your keep space and then if you have a recruiter you'll have a safe space for that and then crafting cards you want to keep in the same type of clearing not necessarily as the keep but the same as each other here it happened to be the same but if it was if i had a favor of the foxes i would have put my workshop here and if i decided to go uh, crafting later i would try to keep them in fox clearings because you want to threaten the favor cards and the dominance cards pretty much more than any other player because you have the the largest board presence uh let's take our turn here so with the with the woodland alliance in the game which you should you almost always have in a in a base game a lot of what they do is going to determine your game as well and early game because you don't really have many other sources of point income other than building you're going to take out these tokens every time so first we're going to we're going to build another sawmill and i'll talk about why i'm going all sawmills more in a second um we're going to build a sawmill we're going to take this token for a point one because we don't want to lose our double buildings and cat there if they revolt next turn and as the cats we're almost always going to be the main uh, source for their revolts in the base game it's rare that the eerie will be the focus of them or obviously the vagabond so this is tough we can get a point here um if i was playing against players i would not want to give up this mouse guard but against the ai of course don't really have to worry about that so we took out that um we can build again but we are low on wood so we're not going to do that we can overwork to get an extra action we don't need to do that we're going to go ahead and take out this other token early on it's going to be your job to keep the woodland alliance down and like i said they're almost always going to target you it's easy though it's free points because they're not going to have any warriors on the board yet so anywhere they pop up you're going to squash that token and if the player order if the turn order lines up correctly you should get a lot of free points from that which will be very important late game uh going back to why i go all sawmills early you want to get to a five point building or four as po as early as possible so that when they destroy that you can build it again the next turn you want your later buildings to be taken out by a revolt or a vagabond or whatever so that you can build it again the very next turn and get 10 points from it total that's usually your win condition from points let's see let's take a look at oh he's fighting us here that's fine you don't really worry about warrior tokens early you have your field hospital you can consolidate back at your base and with your double move actions you can get back out on the board quickly and i have plenty of cards um dominance cards are great to dump for field hospitals oh we gotta match it um here we're gonna drop this scouting party is fine so let's take a look at what the area is doing they're going despot which is usually a better uh, later game when you're fighting more frequently they're only building one around so they're not going to be rushing up and they have pretty strict decree here of suits that they're favorable to them so they're going to be getting pretty easy points the vagabond is always going to be a threat the general point flow of the base game the vagabond is going to um, always be a threat you have to start attacking him mid game at the latest the wood alliance come from behind they're not going to do much early but then they're going to explode and surge ahead and then the eerie can just be they can shoot out to an early lead of like 12 15 points in a couple of rounds um do you have to force a or you don't have to but someone has to force a turmoil for them um, to stop them 
and because of the way that the base game is set up you're always on opposite sides you're going to have these incidental fights early on but later it's going to be harder for you to do much against the birds so it's really up to the woodland and the vagabond to kind of balance out the eerie you're going to be having steady point income early game from the buildings especially if you stack in one type like i suggest so people are going to be gunning for you in the mid game but that's why you're going to be stomping down these sympathy tokens so they can't pop your buildings get free points from it and then hopefully secure enough space to build late game because your bottleneck is going to be spaces um, in games without the Vagabond, you're going to be really tight on space, but if the Vagabond's getting all of his items from the ruins and opening up spaces, you can usually hold the middle ground. You only need about, uh, other than your, your main three here, you're going to need two or three more sites uh, to control total. So let's go on and take our turn. Going to build. The Vagabond's sitting here. If he has his crossbow, he does not have a crossbow. Uh, watch out for crossbows because they can take out buildings without combat. We're going to build a sawmill here. We're going to take out this token with an attack. I said always take out the tokens. And the choice here is to take out this one for a third action or pull back some forces with a consolidate. And I think here I'm going to pull back um, this cat and this cat to here and here respectively because otherwise they're going to get taken out for nothing. Um, we're not going to lose, we're not going to give up points for that, but we want to start defending these spaces. Hopefully the Vagabond's going to take this ruin and then move up here and take this ruin. That's what a, that's what a player would do, but who knows with the AI. So let's go ahead and take out this token. I hope they add a skip animation feature. Uh, when other players fight, it just gives you an overview that happens real quickly. I wish they would do that, especially for fights without a actual battle. So we can play the dominance card, but of course we, won't, we don't want to do that now. Our other option is to recruit, but we only have the one recruiter out. So the movement's going to consolidate forces better than a recruiting in a safe space. Uh, so we're going to move here. I read the map wrong. I was looking at that. And then here. So now we left him with a pretty poor choice for a vault. And, and the bird goes after him. So there's no chance he's going to get any points for revolting here. And he really wants to pop some to some buildings, especially if there's wood available to pop uh, for his his revolt to get points. Otherwise, it's establishing a base with no real point. Let's see, what are the other things to talk about with the cats? Um, the cats do win with dominance cards more than other, any other base faction. You just have such a presence on the board it's uh, consistent. The birds can build up big armies, but not spread across the board like the cats. And generally in a four player game, all of the dominance cards will show up at some point. The worst place they can end up is in the, in the decree because they can sit there for round after round. Uh, like right now we have the bunny dominance, which isn't great for this map. We're really if we need a dominance victory, we would be hoping for the mouse to show up. So now we're going to build. We can build here safely now because there is, uh, we have the two warriors there. The Vagabond's only sitting on one sword, no, no crossbow, so he can't get to our, our building here. We're going to do Sawmill. That's going to put us at 14. Which is obviously a big lead here. Against other good players, we'd be probably sitting against, uh, sitting close to Eerie and Vagabond if they hadn't interacted much or fought with us much. We, let's see what money we have. 
So this would be a good time to overwork. You want to get in a couple of overworks and have a uh, stockpile because later on when you get one of those big, uh, like when you get a, a five pointer taken out, they're expensive. And if you built one the previous round, you're not going to have enough. But if you overwork and build up a stockpile of wood, then you can build them back to back to get those big points. This is a good time to get another recruiter. I would prefer it up here somewhere if this had been taken already. Because we already have one here. But we could just take the left side of the board. So we'll go recruiter. We have no tokens to worry about. We can move and take out this one and get a free point. But points aren't an issue right now. So this is a good time to recruit. Make use of that building we just built. Uh, Burrow Bank is pretty good. We're not going to be building it here. We're not going to put out a, a recruit a craftsman now. Our workshop for crafting. So he doesn't even build now. He's not going to be building up any points. So we've got one last building spot here. We need to move out and take some more. He's going to probably get one here. Give us one. And we'll get another recruiter next round and recruit. Um, to go ahead and get another point here. We could have moved and attacked, but we're not worried about points. We're just going to fortify here. Take this point. Next round, maybe move up here and make sure we control this if he doesn't build. He's not building anywhere right now, but he might put in a card. This is normally the point we would need to start hurting the Vagabond, but he's not really doing much. The AI, AI so far is pretty spotty. Sometimes they do really well. I've had some close games of like they got 28 or 29 points. Or I had one where it was, uh, I won with 32 or 33, but the Woodland Alliance had 29 and the Erie had 28. That was really tight. But other games like this, they just don't seem to get off the ground. And they haven't been fighting each other or anything. They're just kind of wasting actions. So we'll go ahead and move. We're going to pull him back here and move up this one. Just one. So we'll have four. And we're going to move three forward probably. Or we'll take, let's see, we'll take two from here. So that's a big force we can send out. Three here. Establish that. Hold and build up here and win a game. So there's another Dominus card. We'll hold on to this. Uh, it's hard. For, we're not going to be crafting that anytime soon, but it's good to always hold on to big crafting points just in case. I'll know what he's doing. <laughs> he didn't even do anything on his turn. He had four cards in hand and five supporters and he didn't put out a token. 
He's attacking us one to three, which is fine. This is normally around where we would probably lose a building or two. But that would be good because then we can immediately rebuild it to finish out the game. And that's what I mean by the cats are kind of, uh, the f their fate is in the other player's hands more. Because of the building space limit and also if they take out your, your big buildings. That kind of gives you your headroom for for finishing out the game. It's easy to get to 20 as the cats, but getting from the 20 to 30 is is a lot harder. You hit a bottleneck a lot harder than the other factions. By this point, the the Woodland Alliance usually has enough stuff out that they're they're getting a consistent five, seven points. Um, the Vagabonds quests are usually stacked up enough here that or they have enough items that they can take out enough hostile pieces for, to finish it out and the eerie is usually a lot stronger with their consistent scoring than we are from the roost that even a turmoil for them doesn't usually hurt them much but we can have a great game where nothing goes wrong and then we just stop scoring points because of space um, so here we're going to move We're going to be aggressive and go with four just in case of a an ambush guard. And then we'll reinforce from here. We'll send both because we have these three tokens here. I really don't want to lose that. Uh, we're going to attack. There's the ambush I was worried about. Oh wow, and he had armors. Obviously I'm not paying too much attention since we're playing AI. So that was a really tough loss for us. Which makes this more interesting since um, we don't want to just, yeah, we can discard this since it'll become available. Now the other players know that's in play. The Aerie could actually make a play for it down here, but not too worried about that. So now we want to recruit on the back end of that. So even if we had taken that space, we could have built, we have eight wood, which is a lot. We only had one action left. So we would have only gotten two points this turn and three next, that puts us at 25. So we're talking three or four rounds to close it out if they didn't take out a sawmill that we could rebuild. And three rounds is a lot after mid game. The game can easily end in five or six rounds if someone takes a, a surge. Uh, I'm going to save this. You want to generally save your bird cards for the extra actions at key times. This would be a round where that's what I want to do. Don't want to do that. So we're going to get an extra action this turn. We're going to move back and attack again, try to get that space because we can't build. Like I said, you're going to run out of space to build and building is your, your points engine. So we're going back here again. Hopefully it doesn't have another ambush. I could have moved down here, but it's harder to take control to build. You have to rule the clearing. We have to just get a, a victory here. And now I'm also going to move some of these. I'm going to take them all because we have such a wall of forces here. And the movement rules, um, I'm not too concerned about anybody getting my keep 
other than the Vagabond. Which, if he had enough swords, that would be a right place to go now, but he only has one. So we're going to attack here again. So now we can build here. So we're out of workshop or sawmills, which was our points engine. So we're gonna go with the recruiter and recruiter. And that's why we've been stockpiling. That's we we did the overwork for the extra sawmills or the extra wood. And that's also the Hawks for Hire action, the extra action helped us get that point. So I got another root T, that's two points. That should guarantee a victory next round. And we've got a bird card, so that's that's great. It's pretty safe to discard dominance cards because you can always claim them later as the cats. And you don't have to usually worry about other players going for it. I think we broke the AI in the first two rounds and we just took out all their tokens because since they built this token, they have done nothing the rest of the game. Gonna actually send a feedback about that. Oh no. Uh, we could ambush here but that's not necessary. He's only got one versus our two. I want to save that, that bird card for an extra action next round to guarantee we finish it out. Now here is a tougher one. We don't want to lose a recruiter. We want to lose a sawmill. If this was a sawmill, I would let him attack and hope that um, he attacked again and got a sawmill. But I'm actually going to use the ambush here because we're going to build another recruiter for three and craft that other item for two for to, to get the five we need to win. And uh, if you didn't notice, the Vagabond has surged up to 25 this round. He came out of nowhere because of questing. If I wasn't going to win this round, I would definitely spend my entire round stopping him, attacking him with everything to damage all of his items and force him to spend a turn recuperating. So we're gonna craft this for two. And then we'll build a recruiter for three points. And that'll finish it. So yeah, he went heavy craft uh, questing late game, which between that and pumping some cards to me for points, shot him up from 12 or 15 to 25. 
the Wooden Alliance AI broke this game. They did nothing. They're sitting on two points. And then the Eerie just kept going into turmoil and crashing. So not a good showing from the AI aside from the Vagabond. So that's the cats. Uh, they're, that's the general strategy. Go heavy sawmills. Don't worry too much about crafting, except single clearing crafting cards. Uh, get those one points or sometimes two when you can. The birds are going to be something you don't really worry about until mid game to late game. The Woodland Alliance, you want to punch them, their tokens every time early game. Get your high sawmills out early so that you can rebuild them if they get taken out for big points. And punch the the Vagabond whenever he starts getting a lot of momentum. That's the general strategy. If you get ganged up on a lot, go for a dominance victory if the clearing suits line up for you. Especially if they match if one of them matches your keep because you shouldn't lose your keep if you're using field hospitals uh, aggressively, which I recommend. Since you're not crafting much, especially, you're going to be pretty stacked in your keep with forces. And you can see I made like the keep and then the three adjacent clearings to it. I kept a line of soldiers there and kept control of those, so I didn't have to worry about people moving into my keep at all, aside from the Vagabond. Um, if you're playing with the otters in, in the physical game, the cats don't really use the otters too much because you're not worried as much about card draw as the other factions. You're more more worried about space on the board than what's in your hand, and you don't use cards in, in your hand nearly as much except for birds. Those extra actions from birds are important. Um, if I hadn't had that bird card around before the last round, and the, I would have not won in that round. I would have needed one more round to finish it out and the Vagabond would have actually won. So hold on to bird cards. Those are important for the extra actions. Um, and the last two things to reiterate, build recruiters in suits matching your keep in clearing suits matching your keep so that you can threaten dominance and build crafting in clearings that match one another. You build all your craftings in the same suits your workshops for crafting um, so you can threaten favor cards. You, if you get a favor card off, you can pretty much win the game. If you get a lot of the Woodland Alliance or Eerie buildings and tokens. And lastly, just protect your wood because your wood can be a ton of points. I've seen players leave eight wood out and then the Woodland Alliance revolt there and just win the game like fourth round because players didn't think about their their wood tokens being worth points. The cats are a lot of fun to play. You have all those actions, but it, as I said, you really only have two free actions around. One of those should always be building. If you can't build, you're going to default to recruiting and then move and attack. Um, overwork is your extra action if you don't need to move or attack. Like a, a safe round is build, recruit, and overwork for extra wood. You'll generally need to do two of those a game to have a stockpile of wood to rebuild a five-pointer sawmill. And most games tend to go, I'd, I'd say, 60% of games with four players, the, a, the Vagabond or the Woodland Alliance are going to win. And then the Eerie and the Cat split the rest. The Eerie's a little stronger because if you play them perfectly, their points engine is faster than the Cat's. But... The area is easy to, easier to interrupt. Um, if you pay attention to their decree and the suits in their decree, you can force a turmoil at key points and they lose points. The cats are never going to lose points. You're just going to get to build more points if they do come and attack your stuff. If you lose a building, that's not the worst thing in the world because you're just going to get points for building it again. And that's generally how you're going to win by points. And if, if not by points, you go for dominance. And the cats do have a higher... Uh, dominance win rate than any other dominance or any other faction can do dominance i kind of like playing the cats a lot more now i played them a lot now in the digital edition um i didn't play them too much in the physical game since we started with the vag with the otters and the lizard cult 
the lizards are a lot of fun. I hope they, they add that, that expansion in soon. The lizards bump up against the cats a lot and generally make your life harder because of their building space uh, needs. You end up fighting a lot with them. And if the otters and lizards are in the game, you're not gonna you're gonna ignore the otters for the most part. Maybe buy a couple of of uh, bird guards from them, but you're not gonna need their movement or their their forces. Um, but you are uh, warrior token rich, so you can buy their their bird cards pretty aggressively. And then the lizards, you're gonna have to fight them for space and hope that the other players help you keep them down. And they actually make things harder too because as the cats you can spend cards pretty aggressively but with the lizards in the game you have to pay attention to what you're getting rid of and making their outcast and hated suits because that can that can make them just a powerhouse if you don't pay attention or if you give them what they need i hope that was informational give you some tips on how to play the cats and help you win some games the cats are going to be in pretty much every game um, there's not many online games right now. If you're playing without the Vagabond, because a, a lot of players do not like the Vagabond in the base game, or in general, they like other factions. If you're playing without the Vagabond, and it's just the Eerie and the Woodland Alliance, then it's, it's a safer game for you. You don't have to worry about the Vagabond uh, blowing up or you know taking out sneaking into your keep and, and hurting you that way or what he's going to do but it's safer but tighter points wise because he's not clearing out those central points where you where the ruins are so you really do rely on the vagabond to do that but it forces you to fight more with the birds if the vagabond's not there clearing it out you're going to have to move out more and instead of going in the middle, I tend to go around the outside, like go all up the top or all around the left side or, or one of the sides um, instead of across the middle of the map because the Wooden Alliance is generally going to take the middle somewhere so they can have more access. So with this, this three mix, uh, the Wooden Alliance is still probably stronger, but I would say it's, it's a little closer balance without the Vagabond in. But you do have to be more aggressive with the cats. And in that case, you might want to tilt from all sawmills to a mix of sawmills and recruiters. Still mostly ignore workshops unless you have a free extra space and, and resources. That's all I can think of for the cats. Hope that's some good information for you. And good luck in your games.